Welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave. And welcome to Episode 6, How Will They Land Starship? So how do they plan on landing this big, beautiful starship? That's a question a lot of us have. So I set out to answer that question. SpaceX has actually been landing their first stage boosters for years now, but it wasn't always as easy as it looks today. It took several years of trials and errors and more errors. They started with Grasshopper. This was their Falcon 9 reusable development vehicle that was used for experiment flight tests and designed to perform vertical takeoff and landings. They started out small, flying only 5.4 meters off the ground. But with this success, they moved forward. During the next flight, they hovered at 40 meters. and then landed successfully. During one of the next flights, they lifted off, moved horizontally. These cows weren't real happy with the results. Doing this, they tested the stability, control, and navigation systems. And landed again. But not every test was a success. Now it was time to try to go a little higher. Each time this was done, SpaceX gathered more information. This would allow them to tweak the NAV computer system. So it would be easier to reproduce these movements in the future. This time they took it up to 250 meters. They hovered for a few seconds and then brought it back down. At this point they felt they were ready to give it a shot on the first stage Falcon 9 boosters. But everything didn't go quite as planned. September 2014, the booster ran out of liquid oxygen. In April 2015, it was a sticky throttle valve. I've actually used that excuse before. At least that's what I told the officer. And then there was a landing leg that didn't hold. But here, on December 2015, they had their first successful landing. And on April 2016, they had their first successful barge landing. And they've been landing them fairly successfully ever since. And this core just landed for its fourth time in a row, just last week. Wow. The Falcon has landed for the fourth time. These boosters are designed to be used ten times. Let's turn it around for a fifth, guys. Basically, they had to do the same similar tests for Starship. This is Starhopper, Starship's prototype vehicle doing its 20 meter hop. Here, it's doing its 150 meter horizontal point to point hop. Once they were able to accomplish all this, it made it easier to implement all this into Starship. Starship will be coming into Earth's atmosphere at approximately 19,000 miles per hour, or approximately 30,500 kilometers per hour. 
this is just basically too fast to come in the same way as the Falcon boosters do. So Starship will have to use the atmosphere to bleed off speed before it can land. Starship will be belly flopping in the upper atmosphere at a 60 degree angle. Using its nose fins to maintain the correct angle. This is similar to what skydivers do when they're falling toward Earth before they open their parachute. It will use its rear fins to stabilize the fall and keep it on course. At this point, Starship will be hypersonic. It will maintain this for approximately 15 minutes. It will then slow to supersonic and be pulling approximately 2 Gs at this point. It will then lower its nose and bring the ship to 90 degrees. It will slow even more to subsonic speeds and maintain this for approximately 3 minutes. Then, as it slows and nears the ground, it'll reorientate itself to an upright position, fire its engines, and land. Another control platform for Starship is its engine gimbal, also known as thrust vector control. This allows the engine gimbal to tilt on its XY axis plus or minus five degrees. Here is a gimbal in action. Now here's something I had a hard time finding information on. It's because SpaceX hasn't lot out a lot of details on their landing legs. Since they don't want to give us any information, we're just going to have to speculate a little. They set much closer to the body than Falcon Booster's landing legs. Starship's legs look like they're able to move up and down to independently adjust their height depending on the terrain they're landing on. Similar to the pins in this pin toy can move up and down to the shape of your hand. If this is true, Starship should be able to land on an uneven surface and stay stable. Another important fact is the weight of the engines are in the lower half of Starship. This makes the center of mass on the ship very low to the ground. The next thing is Starship's hull is 9 meters wide. Even though its height this still gives a wide area for it to land on. If all this is true, it ought to make for one awesome landing. A special thanks to all my new patrons, Mike Jacob, Kristen Palmer, Rob Colling, and S. Iqbal Hossein. This means so very much and helps more than you know. Mm -hmm.